today I want to deal with the question of should news be balanced? This is a really kind of a critical question and it comes up all the time, particularly now that we start talking about fake news and the power of Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Where did this notion of balanced news come from? Because in my opinion, this is a lot of crap that news should be balanced and it's one of the biggest problems in the television news business. The world of print and print journalism had never been balanced. When um, uh, Benjamin Franklin was publishing The Current in Philadelphia, railing against the King of England, nobody said, hey Ben, what about the King of England's point of view? Don't you think we ought to encourage that? And when, uh, when Thomas Paine was publishing in, in New England, you know, uh, common sense, nobody said, hey Tom, this is great on the colonial side, but where is Britain's point of view in this? Newspapers and print organizations have always Always been unbalanced. If you buy the National Review, you know what you're getting. On the other hand, if you buy the New Republic, you know what you're getting. And nobody expects the National Review to balance out their conservative point of view with some liberal point of view. So this whole idea that even the New York Times or something like that should be balanced and unbiased is crap. But it's particularly crap when it comes to television and particularly dangerous because Print, fine. The average American spends 19 minutes a day reading, but the average American spends five hours a day watching television or videos. I don't think just because you're cutting the cable you're getting out of this thing. And so that's the medium we really have to pay attention to. And where did this notion that television news or television journalism has to be balanced? I'll tell you a very quick personal story because this is a good one. When I quit CBS and I bought my little video camera and I went off to shoot my very first pieces, the first place I went was to a Palestinian refugee camp in the Gaza Strip because it was the height of the Intifada and I thought this would be an interesting place to go. So I spent a month in Jabalia refugee camp with my little video camera shooting video every day and I came back and I sold it to PBS NewsHour, which is still on the air, and they paid me $50,000 for the start, which was pretty good. But before it aired, Robert McNeil, who was one of the two hosts, it used to be called the McNeil Lira News Hour called me over and he said, we have a problem with your piece. And I said, what's the problem? He said, it's not balanced. I said, what do you mean? He said, where's the Israeli point of view in this? I said, there is no Israeli point of view. I went to Gaza to see why people are, you know, blowing up. And if you live in Gaza, you'll see it's a crap life and they live terrible lives. And that's all I want to show. What drives these people? Why do they think the way they do? And I never said in balance. He said, we won't put it on the air unless it's balanced. And so I had to go out and they blocked this guy. They got me some Israeli. Israeli consulate representative who came in and gave his opinion on the dangers of Palestinian terrorists and all that kind of stuff, which had very little to do with the story, but that's the only way they would air it, so that it would be balanced. This is a lot of crap, balanced. And I said to him, when you do the piece on the Gulag, do you also give the Soviet perspective on this thing? When you write about uh, South Africa, do you also give Johannesburg's perspective on why apartheid is really a great idea? And today I would say, if we're doing a story about North Korea, do we really want to give Kim Jong-un's perspective on why it might be a good idea to nuke uh, Los Angeles? That would be balanced. So where did this notion of balance come from? Well, it came from the technology. When television first started, it was broadcast through the air. First, it was incredibly expensive to start a network. It took hundreds of millions of dollars when that was a lot of money. This is before they were billionaires. And there was only enough room in the electromagnetic spectrum for three networks. In Britain, you had one and then you had two. So the fact is that these things were kind of constricted. And, and they were licensed in America. To get a license, you go into the FCC. And the whole idea was that, well, this is the only television there is, and I guess it better be kind of even and balanced. And even from their point of view, they thought, why the hell should we alienate half the viewers by saying we're liberals or we're conservatives? Let's just be oatmeal, which is what these people turn into. They turn into oatmeal television, and it's oatmeal to this day. When they do global warming, they go, well, that is the, you know, it could be global warming, even though it's 138 degrees in Rome, but it could also be something else. So here's some right-wing fascist idiot who's going to give the other point of view. This is crap, and it dilutes what journalism does. To me, journalism is you express your point of view, and you say, this is what I think. If you don't like it, don't watch the program, don't go here. 
in the, in the world of art, what made me think of this thing, I'm reading one of my favorite publications here, which is the London Review of Books, and they have this fantastic piece on Picasso's Guernica, which is going to appear backward to you because that's what this thing does. But you know the painting. And Picasso painted it in outrage over what, what Franco and the Nazis had done in terms of bombing this little village at Guernica. It was like dress rehearsal for World War II. They just eviscerated the place and killed civilians. And Picasso's work is incredibly powerful, and it says this is what the Germans and, and, and Franco, this is what the fascists did to this little village. But if we were to put this thing on television, NBC News, he'd say, okay, Picasso, here's the Guernica part, but we want half the painting to be this nice picture of General Franco, because that's balance. And to me, this is just bullshit. So I'm opposed to balance. I'm in favor. Now, the great thing is that the video revolution, which is what we're really all about here, does away with this need for balance. In the days when the technology meant you could only have three television networks, well, I could understand somebody saying, well, equal time and balance, we should get their fair word. But when everybody and their brother has an iPhone that can broadcast to the world like we're doing here, then the balance thing goes out the window because now television, video, whatever you want to call it, journalism, is on the same grounding as newspapers or magazines or, or Thomas Paine and his pamphlets or Picasso in his painting. You don't like Picasso's painting, go paint yourself your own goddamn picture of Franco and stick it up on your wall. That's a free press in the world of painting. Well now, we need a free press in the world of television and video journalism. And the fact is that you or I or anybody else can pick up your iPhone and make a video and do your own journalism if you don't like the kind of journalism you're seeing someplace else. We're no longer limited to three networks or 500 cable channels. We now have the opportunity for the first time to have an infinite number of channels. And that's what this video revolution is all about. This is not about another cooking show. This is about opening the door to this most powerful medium in the world to anyone and everyone who's got an opinion, which is exactly what the printing press did 500 years ago. So forget balance. Get out there. Say what you think. If you don't like what you see on television, start your own show. It's easy to do. And of course, we'll show you how on the VJ.com, which I urge you to sign up for. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Hello from Portugal. We're going to be here for a week, but again, we're going to be going live here because they got the internet like everybody else. I'll talk to you later. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye.